Hi! Hello! It's Maya. Welcome back to my channel. Pooh, first of all, why do you have a feather in your foot? Second of all, sit your ass up, boy. <laughs> so, <laughs> fun fact, this video was supposed to be filmed, like, two years ago at this point. There's actually, like, things that went into why it wasn't filmed. I'm not gonna get into it, just because why... <laughs> who cares, but um, I was gonna go on a whole sp spiel and be like, I don't know why it wasn't filmed, but like I know why it wasn't. So anyways, we're doing it now. I figured it was like the perfect time to talk about dead stretching and give a little more information about it, only because I currently am in the process of dead stretching my ears back up. If you guys remember, I'm at a 22 slash 23 millimeters. However, in the winter time, I always make the mistake of like, if I leave my ears naked for like two to three days, they shrink like fast and it's always harder to stretch them back up in the winter time. So it's, it's taken a bit for me to get back up to like 22, 23, but we're in the process. Currently this ear, I think is at like a 15 or 16 millimeters. And then this one is at like a, it's at like a 2021. 20, so yeah, I just figured it's time to do another little 101 guide and give you guys some more info. As you know, I already have two other videos about stretching your ears. One is like the 101 guide on it. The other one is the different methods of stretching your ears. So even though I already have those two videos, I still get questions to this day all the time. Even like the past year of like me just not being active on social media. What is dead stretching? How do I do it? It is a very simple concept. I guess I'm just gonna be here to break it down even further so that's a, it's a little more digestible, if you will. That being said, I'm gonna try to not really go over the descriptions of all the words I'm gonna use. So like tapers, blowout, taping method, etc. Just because if you, if you don't know what those are, just watch the other videos first and then come back here. I feel like if you're here, you wanna get to the nitty gritty of dead stretching, not the nitty gritty of words and their meanings. So I guess just like really quick, tapers, method of stretching, big no-no, don't do it. Blowouts, gross, ew, happens when you stretch too fast. Tunnels, plugs, hangers, weights, all those things are different jewelry options and they're all different things. Okay, cool, I guess that's it. Now, I also wanna say this before we get into this is that I know there's gonna be so many people because there always is who love to say, well, I stretched this way and nothing bad happened or I use silicone and nothing bad happen. Good. Cool. Congrats. I'm very happy for you. You do you. I don't control what anybody does with their body. If you want to stretch a certain way, then stretch a certain way. However, this video is for the people who want to, want to stretch their ears the safest way possible. Maybe it's not the correct way for you, but that is why I'm using the word safest and not correct. Do I personally think it's the correct way? Yeah, I mean, duh. It's not that deep. Cool. Let's get into it. First things first. What is dead stretching? Dead stretching is the process in my opinion and a lot of other people's opinions, the safest process of stretching your ears using heavy plugs made out of glass. It's typically glass, it can be like steel or stone, to get to the next size. This word, this this, this junction of words does not come out of my mouth easily. It's the safest method. <laughs> it's so hard. It's the safest method to use because it's a natural process. You're not forcing the stretch to happen like you would if you were to use tapers and you're not irritating your lobes at all by like, if you were to use the taping method, taking them out daily to change the tape and clean them and it's definitely a thousand and ten percent better than doing something in my opinion stupid like taking silicone and shoving that into your ears to stretch up to the next size and risking getting a tear and then having your lobes start healing and melding into the silicone I guess is a less gross way to say it but basically yeah like if you use silicone to stretch and your ear tears and you don't notice there is a very big chance that those two will just like adhere together and you're left with an even bigger issue just because you can wait like three more weeks to stretch up. Why is it the safest? Because it's natural. It's taking two natural things that just happen without us trying, aka gravity and time, and it's using those two things together to just stretch it out. You just let it happen. It is the slowest method, however, slow equals safe, okay? We all know the tortoise and the hare, all right? Slow and steady wins the race. It's also like the least likely to cause problems down the line. Other methods can easily cause tears or blowouts, which is just gonna make the healing process longer because because one, you have to wait for it to heal, and two, scarring will most likely occur, and scarred skin takes a lot longer to stretch because the skin is tighter and it's tougher, so it's just not gonna be easy to work with at all, which that just results in the repeated process of like stretching, tearing, healing, scarring, stretching, tearing, healing, scarring, and it just it's just gonna get worse and worse, so you don't wanna deal with all that, you just wanna go straight to the natural, safe, 
Easy method. Why should I convert to millimeters? Now let's talk about the power of the metric system and why you should 100% use that when referencing any kind of sizing with your ears and why you should not be using gauges or inch sizes. If you notice, whenever you look at a gauge wheel or a gauge sizing chart, you'll notice that the sizes usually will typically start from like, I don't know, like 18 to like 20 gauge and they'll stop at a double zero gauge. Then you'll notice that all the sizes from there onwards are all in inches. That in itself can get very just confusing when talking about like sizes because it's like okay well one day you're at a double zero gauge and then you stretch up and suddenly you're at seven sixteenths of an inch how, how does that work how do we go from gauges to now inches why are we converting stretching sizes midway through the process that's weird however if you use millimeters it's so much easier to just say oh i was at 10 millimeters and now i'm at 11 millimeters 10 millimeters is double zero 11 is 7 sixteenths. Doesn't that sound a lot better? <laughs> now, I do explain this in previous videos, but it is just vital information to have when we talk about dead stretching, and it's more beneficial for your lobes, so we're just gonna go over it again really quick, just so that it's like fresh in your mind, right? Hopefully, it'll make more sense. So, let's say that you were using tapers to stretch, and I'm using this as an example because it is typically the most used form of stretching, unfortunately, but it is also what causes the most issues because of what I'm about to explain to you. So, Let's say you're stretching using tapers and you're using the inches sizing, right? So let's say you're at five eighths, you're looking at a chart, next size up is three fourths. You're going to assume that the next stretch you're gonna do is gonna be to three fourths. So you're at five eighths and you're gonna stretch using a taper and you're pushing it through and okay, cool, now you're at three fourths. But you're kind of like, why the fuck was that so hard? Why was I struggling so much? What's going on? Why did that hurt so badly? Is it supposed to hurt this much? Did I tear my ears? What's going on? The reasoning why people start having a lot of issues at bigger sizes when they're using tapers is because that jump that you just made from five eighths to three fourths of an inch is three millimeters. You didn't go from one size to the next. You skipped three whole sizes. That's why it's so bad to use tapers, especially at those bigger sizes. Like realistically, is it safe to use them while you're at smaller sizes? Not really, but it's definitely a lot less damaging and you're going to have a lot less issues trying to use them at smaller sizes than if you were to use them big sizes. That's not me condoning using tapers at all. That's just me saying like, yeah, like smaller sizes, it, it is a little bit easier. Bigger sizes, no. It's so much trauma to your ear happening at once and it's just going to result in like really bad reactions. If not now, then however many months or years down the line. However, if you're using the metric system and you're using millimeters, stretching from 16 millimeters to 19 millimeters, which is stretching from 5 eighths to 3 fourths, you wouldn't be skipping all those sizes. You would go from 16 to 17, then 17 to 18, 18 to 19 cool, you're at that next size. And you're doing it slowly over the course of a few months and you're just doing a one millimeter stretch at a time. You're not doing it all in one night, crying on your bathroom floor, wondering why your ear is bleeding. Now let's talk about dead stretching and how it is not using weights. So a lot of people hear dead stretching and they immediately assume that it's just like using hangers or weights to stretch your ears, which it's not at all. Weights are accessories or jewelry choices and they're not meant to be worn for like long periods of time. Especially the bigger that you go, the heavier weights get. I know that I wore these really big weights when I went out for dinner one time and I think I had them in for like two or three hours max before I had to like take them out in the middle of dinner because my ears were get starting to get sore. It's a fashion statement, right? They're not meant to be worn for long periods of time at all. In fact, just like, just don't even think about weights or hangers in this video because they're completely irrelevant. Not what dead stretching is at all. And I know some people also like to think that they can dead stretch by maybe wearing like steel tunnels or something and then hanging something heavy through it. That's not dead stretching either. So what's the difference between dead stretching and using weights? So when you're dead stretching, you're using a plug. This thing is going to cover the entire surface area of your lobe from the bottom to the top to the sides all around. Even though you're using weight, not weights, but weight and gravity to stretch your ears out, it's doing it naturally and it's doing it evenly. It happens over a long enough period of time that if you keep your ears healthy and you massage them with oil and all that fun shit, it's going to thicken up your lobes, it's going to stretch everything evenly, and you're not going to end up with any thinning at the bottom of your lobes. And they'll stay like relatively thick if you do things the correct way. Now weights, however, focus all of that weight and that area on just the bottom of your lobe. So you see how it's all stretched out? See, like nothing's touching here, but weight is touching here. This is just gonna make it so thin at the bottom. It's not gonna do you any favors. Whee. 
it's really just uneven weight distribution, which is just gonna result in uneven lobes, which is not fun and nobody wants to deal with. When can I start dead stretching? You can start at any size that you want. It doesn't matter if you just started and you're at like a 18, 16, 14 gauge. Doesn't matter. You can do it anytime. People think that since it's about wearing like heavy plugs to stretch, that when they're at the smaller sizes, the plugs aren't gonna be heavy enough to like do anything or have any kind of impact. But realistically, just think of, I don't know, like any person that you know with ear piercings, like just regular 20 gauge ear piercings, they wear normal earrings, whatever. If they wear dangly earrings long enough, their ears aren't 20 gauge anymore. They could fit an 18 gauge in there. They could probably fit a 16 gauge in there. That's why a lot of people who wear earrings for a long period of time, but then decide to stretch their ears, they can go to like 14 gauge right away because their ears have already been stretched out enough to where it's easier. Their body already naturally did that stretch for them. How do I start? Well, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to a reputable body mod site. I would suggest Arctic Buffalo and then just go to their single flare glass plugs. You're gonna find out whatever size that you're at. If you're using gauges or inches, you're gonna convert that to millimeters. So let's say that you're at a 16 gauge, right? That's 1.2 millimeters. So the next size up is gonna be 14 gauge. That's 1.6 millimeters. That's only a 0.4 millimeter jump. So if you've worn that 16 gauge 1.2 millimeter plug for a long time, the stretch to the 14 gauge 1.6 millimeter size, next size up, it's gonna be very easy. Did that make sense? <laughs> After 14 gauge is 12 gauge, which is two millimeters. 10 gauge is three millimeters. Eight gauge is four, six is five, so on and so forth. You can buy a kit if you want. There are some sites that will sell the kits in like every millimeter sizes, or you can just buy until the size that you think that you're gonna stop at, which we all know probably isn't gonna be the size that you're gonna stop at because we all have a goal size and then we go bigger. Or you can buy just literally whatever. It's your money. Do what you want. How do I dead stretch? Well, the process is very simple. You're gonna take the plug that is the next millimeter size when you are ready. You're gonna put it in your ear and then you're gonna wait and you're gonna wear it and that's it. That's all you have to do. I always personally suggest leaving it in the first few days and not taking it out at all, even like to sleep not like when you're showering. If you want to clean it, which I mean, of course you should while you're in the shower or bath or whatever, just kind of like let the water run over it and you can like slowly twist the plug and kind of like move it up and down a little bit. That'll just help to like loosen up the lobe because of the hot water. It'll clean out all like the gucks on the inside, the guckies. And yeah, it'll irritate your ears less than like if you just have a fresh stretch and you take it out like the next day right away. Like you really should let it sit for a few days, like three to four days. And then once your ears kind of like get over that initial surprise of like, hey, right on size then you can like take them out and clean them and it should be a lot less irritable and the risk of any problems happening are gonna be a lot lower. That being said once you are able to take them out and put them back in without any sort of pain or anything massage them with jojoba oil daily preferably once a day should be twice a day. I'm not gonna yell at you if you don't have the time or patience to do it twice a day. I barely had the time or patience to do it once a day so and yeah after about like usually like two to four weeks, like I said, it all depends on the person, but after like two to four weeks, that's usually when you can start to sleep with them out and give your ears that little bit of rest and then be able to put them back in the next day easily without any pain or discomfort. If you do that once and you kind of notice it's a little bit difficult and your ears are kind of like not very happy with you, I would then suggest not sleeping with them out. Ears do shrink fast, so you may have a little bit of trouble putting them in the next day, but realistically, it shouldn't like hurt at all. There shouldn't be any stinging or any like uncomfortableness, you know? How long do I wear the plug before sizing up to the next millimeter. This is one of those subjective answers only because not everybody's the same. I will say the waiting times do get longer the bigger that you go and it is safer to wait longer rather than earlier. Of course we discussed this. I would say at smaller sizes you can easily get away with waiting like four weeks but I would say that's like the very minimum. I would say to be safe at least two months. Now I'm not gonna, like I said, everybody's different. I'm not gonna be the person to judge you, yell at you, whatever. If maybe you feel like you can stretch a little bit faster, who knows? Some people have issues, some people don't. It's just listen to your body, okay? But realistically, yeah, three to four months is the safest, especially when you start getting to those bigger sizes. And even once you are at those bigger sizes, waiting a little bit longer is gonna be a lot better. At the end of the day, like, you know your body best, so if one day you just feel like you're ready and you put the next plug size in and there's no pain and you go throughout your day and your life and nothing bad happens, cool, fantastic. Literally just have patience, let your body do its thing, let, let time do its thing, and try it when you're ready. Any pain, irritation, anything like that, you're not ready. Don't force it. Just put your smaller mill millimeter size back in, wait a little bit longer. Before you want to sit here and like whine and complain about how, oh my god, three to four months, four to six months, that's so long. May I remind you about the fact 
that if you force anything, there is that chance of tearing or ripping or bleeding, which is then gonna cause scarring, which is then gonna start that whole process that I talked about before about how it's gonna take a lot longer because scarred skin is tougher and therefore harder to stretch. So it's gonna take longer. So I wouldn't complain about the wait times if you just want nice healthy lobes. Realistically, forcing things now and risking causing damage is just gonna cause issues in the long run and make things harder and longer in the long run. So think about that before you complain that four to six months is too long. If having stretched ears and looking like a big old ding dong like the rest of us is something that you really want, then just have that patience. Suck it up and do it slowly. So yeah, that's, that's how you do it. Those are most of the things I think I have to go over for dead stretching and and all the information that I think I can give on it. I'm just gonna kind of answer some random questions once again that I got like two years ago. So if you remember sending me this, congrats. My bad for not doing this at that time. But anyways, yeah, I'm gonna answer like a few questions. Someone asked, do I keep the glass plugs in until I can go up a size or do I have to take out the glass plugs every once in a while and switch them out to regular tunnels? You keep them in. Let's say that you're at like 20 millimeters, which is just one step above three-fourths of an inch. Typically, you're only going to find jewelry that is three-fourths of an inch or seven-eighths of an inch. You're not going to find wearable jewelry in the middle, so yeah, you just keep them in. The whole point of dead stretching is to use the weight to your advantage, so if you take them out and you wear something lighter, like tunnels, it's kind of like defeating the purpose. Someone else asks, do I have to start with tapering them? No, like I said, you can go right into dead stretching. Most people pretty much just assume that you start with tapers just because that's the most common way, but you don't have to at all. Do I still tape my ears when dead stretching? Also no. If you don't know what taping is, that's the whole process of wrapping like bondage or I think it's PTFE. I always get the number, the letters mixed up, but it's wrapping that around your plug to like stretch slowly over time as well. It is possible to do that, but there's really no reason to at all. And then how many millimeters is appropriate for each stretch? Half a millimeter, one millimeter, etc. It is typically one millimeter. That's like the pretty, like, like the standard practice, right? <laughs> there are some places I know of that do make plugs in half a millimeter increments. So if you can find those, like I don't have anything against that. Like if anything, that would probably be better and easier, but typically it's gonna be easier to find just like one millimeter increment plug sizes. Just go with that. One millimeter and lower at a time. Never go higher than that. You never wanna skip sizes or anything. Like not even 1.5 millimeters. I don't care. One millimeter max. All right, well, that's all for me. I hope this was helpful and was a nice little addition to the whole 101 series, I guess, that I have on my channel. I hope I went over everything and kind of explained things further and a little bit more clearly for anybody who had any kind of confusion. Honestly, if you have any more questions after this, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to tell you. I guess you just have to fuck around and find out. <laughs> So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and comment and subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.